What's up, folks? Welcome to another episode of Ten Horse Money YouTube channel, and it's fall time, and it's overcast. We got rain in the forecast. It's gonna be moving this way. Got light wind, but the kind of day you want to be throwing a toad. You know, fall. We're getting into that fall, and we're in that fall transition. And almost the end of October, the bait starts moving in the grass, and each time I come out here on a grass lake, I'm wanting to throw that toad or that frog and cover water. So we're gonna. Put the trolling motor in the water and try to cover some ground, see if we can come up with something. You know, it may take a few color changes, it may take a few styles, but uh, I think if we can just keep our head down, we can scratch out a few nice fish. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Jonathan Blattle and I do a Monday night live stream at 7.30 Central. Um, got a lot of great guests. If you're not busy on a Monday night, 7.30 Central, come check it out. Love to see you on there. All right, folks, water temperature is 73.6 degrees. It's about four foot of visibility, overcast conditions, very little wind. There's a little bit of wind out in the main lake. Storms are brewing. Mm. That fish is sharp it. Wow. That was a heck of a bite. Yeah, nice quality fish. And the old toad ate it. Mm. There you go. It's a nice one. Look at that, man. That fish came from about five feet away and crushed that thing. Good quality fish. Beautiful. Mm. Feels good. Maybe there's a topwater bite going on. Hmm. Holy cow. Got a lot of good bluegill popping up in here. That's key. Find that grass got bait in it. You pull up in an area and you don't hear any kind of popcorn, any kind of sipping on the top. Move on. Got to keep moving. Got to keep moving. I'm not hearing any bait in this little section. I had, you know, I caught one fish, had a couple blow ups, but this whole side seems, seems kind of dead. So you just got to bounce around. You know, overcast conditions, fish are going to be more spread out. If you can get by with a toad versus a frog, then by all means do it. You can just cover a lot more water with the toad. If they'll react to it, keep it in your hand, just cover water. If you go for a long time and you don't get bit, you might have to slow down uh, with the frog and kind of pick some stuff apart. But, you know, this overcast conditions, we got a little bit of wind, we got storms moving. The fish should be aggressive, so it tells me to just keep moving around until I can find some better mats, some mats with more bait and some active fish. So, I'm just going to have to keep uh, that rod in my hand and cover some water. Pick your poison. There he is. That's a good bite. That fish got it. Good fish. Come here, buddy. He was not coming off. That's how you want him to eat it. That's a, look at that grass fish, man. These fish are beautiful. What a bite, man. That's how you want him to bite. So I'm kind of bouncing around. You know, it's something you kind of got to do in the fall. The fish aren't everywhere. Um, kind of keying in on grass mats so that I can hear a little bit of bait. Now, actually, this mat didn't have any bait. Well, I can hear some now, actually. Sometimes you got to kind of pull, pull into an area. It takes about five minutes for everything to reactivate and just kind of fish down the bank to see if you can get a bit. But beautiful fish, loving it. They're so pretty in this lake. One thing that's important about toad fishing is when you get out there, hold that rod tip up high. It's something I'm working on. Me and Jonathan were talking about that. I'm 
when you get that bite, you lower that rod tip and it gives them a second or two to engulf the toad or the frog and then you come up and hammer on them. I mean, it's hard to do in the heat of the moment. I usually miss several fish because I'm so amped up. But if you do that one thing, I think, I mean, I know you'll get more fish hooked on the bite and you'll pull it away from a whole lot less. But it does take practice. Missed it. See? Just didn't quite get it. I'm gonna punch, I'm gonna throw a punch right back in there. kind of got off this toad so it started flipping around a little bit and it's had one blow up on it but it's not like it was this morning so I'm gonna cover a little bit more water doing this and then I'm gonna have to make an adjustment and just throw in a little beaver lightweight little fish there he is better fish let's slow down that much better but better than nothing right thanks for nothing just gotta slow down gotta make adjustments in the fall eh, decent little fish it's fat chunky healthy fish just caught on a little beaver hmm. yeah, really don't want to slow down but sometimes you got to force yourself to slow down had like three bites really quick with this thing so we're gonna keep on moving stay with it it seems like they should be up there chomping with this overcast conditions and storm moving in maybe they will but right now i can't get them to bite on that toad flipping that grass always a fallback there he is white swim jig first cat Fisher. Right off the outside of that grass. Seeing a little ball of shad kind of working right there. And uh, put on this Lemon Out Compact Swim Jig become a pro, man. It's a good one. Decent fish. Water's almost 74 degrees. This bite gets a whole lot better in my opinion when it gets in like the mid 60s. So 65 down to 55 seems to pull the bait into the grass a little bit more. I mean, the length of day has a lot to do with it. You know, we're almost at the end of October. So the fish are naturally gonna start making their way into the grass um, and it just keeps getting better as the water temperature drops, the bait moves in there. And I think it's got something to do with the grass heating up and you get a little bit better you get a little bit warmer temperatures underneath that grass especially when the sun's beating on it say the main lake water temperature is 60 that water temperature right at the top or right underneath that mat it's going to be you know probably five degrees warmer just a theory i don't know for sure just a fisherman out here trying to figure it out but it seems to make sense so look for that bite to pick up as the days get shorter and the water temperature falls into the mid 60s that toe bites back on rain moving in it's got cover water that's cool nice chunky little fish rainer again this feels like there might be a frog bite so i'm gonna cover some water see if i can get a few more bites before i have to go heavy stuff hasn't made it yet but it is on its way just kind of switching it up man switching it up main thing cover water just keep cover water, keep moving. So what am I looking for out here as far as grass? There's grass everywhere. I like this nice thick grass and it needs to have some bait popping in. You can kind of hear a little bit of bait popping in this. 
That's bluegill and shad that are sucking the insect larvae off the bottom of the mat. Rock is always a bonus, these little secondary points. But you really have to cover some water. I think a lot of times they like these little sparse stretches of grass. You know, this is just kind of a little patch of grass versus a big old long section. But you never know. You kind of got to cover it all. And then main lake versus main lake point versus secondary points versus in the backs. Usually there will be a higher concentration of fish in one of those areas. You know, something with a really good edge just doesn't have an edge. But a lot of times a defined edge is a place that those fish can sit just a little bit back in, move out move back in and you know it's kind of an ambush point it's almost like a big lay down for them so then you got to kind of figure out are they on the edges um, usually if there's a lot of wind blowing in on it they'll be on the edges or they may be on the back side of it up against the bank you know looking out into the grass covering water is key in fall you know they're not going to be in everywhere a lot of times you'll go for 30 40 minutes without a bite colors um day like today black keep it pretty simple black white and maybe an orange. I'm kind of throwing an orange color toad today and I'm getting bites. I'm missing a few, but it's they're they're blowing up on it and I think it's I think it's just got to keep moving. You know, you're going to miss some fish doing this. They're coming up through that mat and they you're not going to catch them all for sure, but I'm getting enough feedback to know that I've got it pretty close to the right color. Um and then sometimes they don't want a straight retrieve. Sometimes it's you know, just kind of a slosh slosh let it sit slosh slosh let it sit sometimes it's straight retrieve at a medium pace sometimes it's fast sometimes it's super slow and you know sometimes it's just twitch it a couple times and let it sit on the mat so you kind of got to play around throughout the course of the day how did he not get that Change went to white. Nice. There we go. Decent fish. Made a color change. I've been throwing that kind of orange color, and I'm just covering a lot of water, not getting bites. And I think black is the color, but I don't have any black toads. So I put on a white, and you know, just made about 10 casts and got this one. It doesn't seem right, you know, but sometimes just making a little color change. I mean, white shows up pretty good in any kind of conditions, but I think black would be the best contrast for this cloud cover. But I don't have black, so I'm trying white. Yeah, hey, toad fishing can be awesome in the fall. You know, it's just getting started. Um, go out and buy a couple colors of toads, black, white, and then something kind of orange. Put them in your hand, start covering water, especially if you got grass, just main lake points, figure out how far back they are, and just cover water, man. Keep your head down. Get an overcast day like this, it can be pretty exciting. It's fun. There's nothing like a blow up, man. It's just, mm. Just get your get your blood going. Good times. punching rod and flip it in there and get another bite but it hasn't been working today seems like the best follow-up bait today is just throw the toad back in there see how that fish was sitting right on that point it's 
pretty interesting. The wind's kind of blowing in here and just a little weed point. The fish was sitting right there in three feet of water. <clears throat> the fish just slurped it in. Uh, the fish. Come on up in here. Oh, yeah. Slurpy action there. A little slurpy, slurpy. Like 7 Eleven. Now we're in heaven catching these frogs. Not frogs, catching these bass on frogfish 7. Whatever. A little slurpy, slurp, slurp, slurp. Hmm. Like the old 7 Eleven. Bass fish in heaven. A couple different ways to work this toad. The most common one is just throw it out. Hold your rod high and just reel it in like this. It's a straight retrieve. Sometimes when they're more aggressive, they'll want that. It's kind of been working today. But another retrieve that works really good too, is when they're a little bit less aggressive, is just kind of pull it. Just kind of pull it like that and let it sit. Just a little pull, makes a little gurgle. And the other way, when it's real windy, is to cast that like that and actually rip it like that. Just gonna rip it. When it's real loud outside, a lot of times that'll work. The one just grabbed it right there, pulled it down. It's a little fish. So you just gotta experiment, see what kind of retrieve they want. Tucker got my frog. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Good oh God. I'm going to get him There he comes. Still on there? I'm not still on there or not. Oh yeah, it's still on there. That was a heck of a bite. I don't know how big the fish is, but holy oh, cow. Yeah, it's a pretty good sized fish. You know that size? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Look at that folks. That's a freaking grass pig there. Good god. Hey. That was nasty. I think I figured it out. They're wanting this thing just kind of twitched. Twitch, twitch, twitch. Just making a little bit of adjustments. But look at that beast, man. That's a, that is an absolute tank. That fish is, good God. Look at the head on that thing. Hey, thanks for coming along. Give me a thumbs up if you appreciate the content. Please subscribe to the channel. Hit the little bell notification. So anytime I'm dropping content, you'll be the first to know, man. Just gotta keep moving around, moving around, moving around. And uh, that's what happens. Just keep your head down, keep casting. Beautiful fish. <laughs> Whoa, look at this fish, guys. That is a grass master tank. Look at that. Look how wide that fish is. Beautiful. Let's let it go. That's what fall fishing's about, guys. Took a while. We found one. Beautiful fish. Look at the head on that thing. Let's let her go. Man, what a beautiful fish. Look at that thing. That sucker is so tall. Super healthy. Up there eating bluegills. Get on out of here. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. None but good stuff there, folks. Mmm.